This morning, Ray Kurzweil, the inventor and futurist who's been working in the field of artificial intelligence longer than anyone alive. His new book is called The Singularity is Near, the date when he says humans and machines will eventually merge. We know it can be scary and weird to think about, but not for Kurzweil. He says it's more likely to make everything better. We met him at the Wonder Museum in Boston. You don't like the term artificial intelligence. It sounds like it's fake. Artificial intelligence is real intelligence, and sometimes it can be better than human intelligence. Ray Kurzweil knew he wanted to be an inventor when he was five. My name is Raymond Kurzweil, and I'm from Queens, New York. Queens, New York. At age 17, he appeared on the CBS game show I've Got a Secret and revealed a computer he'd built to write music. How many pieces of music has your machine written? Well, it's written several dozen, and uh, it only writes short segments, and when I feel the piece has a future, I go on. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent. Early in his career, Kurzweil made a reading machine for the visually impaired and invented the first synthesizer. All of the equipment that you see can be programmed by anyone sighted or blind to play by itself. By now, Kurzweil's published 11 books, including his latest, The Singularity is Nearer, a follow-up to his 2005 bestseller, The Singularity is Near, affirming a couple bold predictions. One, artificial intelligence will be as smart as humans within five years. In 1999, I made a prediction uh, that we would reach AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, uh, by 2029, within 30 years. You think we're still on track for 2029? I think that's a probably pessimistic. Uh, <laughs> you keep pushing this up. Well, Mo uh, Elon Musk says it's going to be two years. Other people are saying three or four years. Five years is probably conservative. After AGI, says Kurzweil, comes the singularity, a term borrowed from physics, when humans and machines eventually merge. Once the stuff of science fiction like Star Trek... Am I real? Of course you are. It could be much closer to reality than many think. Everything is new. Everything works. And the brain abnormality is gone for good. Extraordinary. The merging of human and machines, whether it's 2045 or a different number, scares the heck out of most people, I think, not you. Well, do we have a negative idea that we have the amount of intelligence that a human has? I mean, maybe we should have stayed at the level of a mouse. In other words, you're smaller. saying, if we can be smarter, why not be smarter? Exactly, and we already are. I mean, just with having cell phones and all of our electronic technology makes us smarter than we were, say, 50 years ago before we had uh, all of these brain extenders. And not just smarter, you say we're gonna be sexier, more creative, funnier, all, all of, of it. which we use our intelligence for. Kurzweil believes most people consumed by bad news headlines don't appreciate the rate of exponential growth in technology or what it can do. For example, solving our energy needs. Do you think we're still on track for all energy needs to be met by wind and solar by 2034? Yes, because we have 10,000 times more energy that falls on the earth from the sun than we need. And it's growing exponentially, just the way all technologies do. And that will give us enough energy, both between the sun and the wind, uh, in about 10 years. That seems super optimistic. That means no coal, no nuclear, no gas. Right. Kurzweil points to two things that he says made us capable of all these advances. One is our brain. Elephants and whales actually have a brain that's bigger than us. Whether that means they're smarter than us, it's really hard to say, but they are quite smart. But they don't have... But they don't have a thumb. All the tools we've created have come really from the, the fact that we have a thumb. Yeah, so it's mind and thumb. Right. Trying to put his thumb on when things will happen has at times been hit or miss for Kurzweil. 
But he has never stopped backing his calls with dozens of graphs and voluminous research, including the claim that by the early 2030s, we will reach something called longevity escape velocity. Which is as time goes by, the, the risk of your dying will not go up. So we won't actually succumb to aging. Does that mean we live forever? It's not forever. I mean, you could take a 20-year-old who has nothing wrong with him, and you could compute his longevity as being many, many decades, and he could die tomorrow, right? So An accident. Yeah. You could also get a disease we haven't cured yet. It's, it's not a guarantee. It just means that we won't increase our chance of dying as time goes by. What, what age do you think you'll live to? And what, what age do you want to live to? Uh, why would I ever want to die? I mean, people only choose to die if they're in uh, insufferable pain, mm -hmm. physical, psychological, spiritual. But if they're uh, of right mind, people want to live. And so there's no reason I would get to a point and say, well, I, I don't want to live anymore. Uh, so I'd like to live forever, but that's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> this concept of longevity escape yeah. velocity is fascinating, living to 150 or 200 years. But he points out, he's like, people say they don't want to live forever, but then you reach 80 or 90, and you're like, well, why yeah. do I want to die? If you're healthy, yes. you can do things, your brain is functioning, right. certainly. I'm fascinated by this, like, artificial intelligence and humans merging. So, I'm trying to envision I, that. I Cyborg, think the most important part is, is that he doesn't see it as us versus them. Okay. He says... We're creating AI. He says we're creating AI with our values. AI is basically going to be part of us. So use your phone right now to do a Google search to find information to be smarter. That essentially is going to be in your brain. Yeah, but not all human point. values are equal or the same. It, so that's the big question. It's a great conversation. Yeah.